Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In today, we're going to carry on with our stats, and then we're going to do some probability. And if you recall, we got as far as talking about the least squares regression um, line, or just called the. Uh, we'll talk about the line of best fit, basically, and. Because we were moving on to an example, I do want to quickly go through this with you guys. So remember that the least squares regression is the line of best fit. It's the equation of the least square regression line is y equals a plus bx. And remember I said to you that this has got the same format as y is equal to mx plus c, where a this time is the y-intercept compared to c, and b is the gradient. Okay, but you have to do a couple of things in order to get this. And this is if you would do it manually okay what's important is and you've got to remember this is that outliers are excluded from the calculation otherwise you end up with a really horrible calculation so again i said to you this is how you do it manually you find the average of x and the average of y the average of x and average of y is just the mean the mean of x and mean of y which you can find easily just by adding up all the x and divide by the number of x you have and similarly for y then what happens you find the gradient of b using this equation so this is if you would do it manually we're going to be using a calculator to do this and i'm going to be showing you how to use a, use a calculator to do this but this is how you would do it manually you then calculate the y-intercept a by using the average x the average y and that b that you've worked out and then you get it okay now again like i said the reason we do this is because you can do two things you can interpolate in other words even though the line say for example your best fit line goes through let's say here are all your dots okay right and then you draw a best fit line like this i could say so obviously not all the dots are everywhere okay so i could say to you what would be the y value if my x was say over here and then that is called interpolation in other words we can tell you according to the best fit line what that y value should be even if we don't have data for that exact point then you've got extrapolation that means that i can carry on the trend i can follow this line across and I can go, oh, look, if my x was out here, yeah, x1, what would my y value be then? So that would be extrapolation. So we use both in the base fit line for both interpolation and extrapolation. Now, it's all very well on me drawing a line of base fit, but like I said, okay, before, is if you've got data like this, you could draw a line of best fit there, or you could maybe draw a line of best fit going through there, or whatever, okay? So this is why we do it using the computer, okay? Not, I mean, a calculator or this equation, shall I say, instead of doing it by just for visually, okay? And then what we have is we have what is called the correlation coefficient. And what the correlation coefficient does is it actually works out how closely the data actually fits to this best line, okay, best fit line. So this is how you would do it if you do it manually. Luckily, our calculators, and calculators do use it for us. Where n is the number of data pairs, s is the standard deviation of, of x values, and the s of y is the standard deviation of y values. What's important is that r is going to be between 1 and minus 1, where minus 1 indicates a negative and strong correlation. In other words, it is very similar to a negative straight line. Zero indicates no correlation and one indicates a positive strong correlation. So now I said, let's go through this question. Okay, and I apologize yesterday for the fact that it's a little bit gray. The reason for that is this actually comes from, I said, came from the Gauteng 2015 prelim paper. And I really, really wanted you guys to experience this question. So um, unfortunately, this is the quality that they uploaded to on the system, but I really wanted you to see it. So let's go through it. It says, a hospital carries out a survey to compare the reaction time of patients of different ages to specific medication taken. The results are shown in the table and it's got scatter plot below. So here is the age in years, and this is the time in hundredths of a second. Okay, so this is the age and this is the time that the medication took. It says one of the patient's reaction time is an outlier. And do you agree that that dude there is the outlier? Okay, because he's 
this here tells me to follow a trend and this one is much longer, okay? It says, how old is this patient? Well, this patient is 25 years old. It says, explain why this patient is an outlier. And you can say, because he's, the time it took for the medication to react much longer or does not fit the trend. Does not fit the trend. Okay, now it says, calculate the equation, the least squares regression, the line of best fit for this data. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get out my calculator. Now, I've mentioned before to you guys that the calculator that, I have, that I'm using is an HP emulator, okay? It really doesn't matter whether you use an HP or if you use a um, Casio or if you use a Sharp, okay? All of their functions are more or less the same, okay? So we have to obviously choose the appropriate things on it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on the HP simply because they're more or less the same and show you where to find things, okay? And then we are going to um, basically go through it, okay? And I'm going to show you because I find that a lot of my students, they struggle the most when it comes to, um, the most when it comes to actually inputting data in the calculator. So the first thing we need to do is get our calculator. At the moment it's in the computer section or calculator section. We need it in to get the stats. So we're gonna go shift, set up and we're going to not choose any of that let's try again we're going to go to mode okay wait let's clear this let's go to mode ah and there's two for stat so we're going to choose two for stat two there we go. And you'll see that there's one for one variable, two for a plus bx, etc. Now we are doing a straight line. We are doing a least squares regression line, okay, a line of best fit. So that needs to have that equation, a plus bx. So whatever, wherever you find this in your calculator, which will be under your stat, you need to choose the a plus bx, okay? So you're going to press the a plus bx, two. Okay, and now you'll see that they are X values and Y values. Now you'll notice in your graph, I just pointed to the screen with my finger, that's really not going to help you. Okay, you'll notice in the, the graph that this is your X axis and this is your Y value. So these values here, your 15, 17, 18, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26. These are your X values and these are Y values. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to put the values into our, our column here. So we're going to start with the x values and we're going to go 15 equals. Okay, we'll come back to the y values in a second. Um, let me just see something. Um, yeah, we're going to come back to the y values. So then we're going to go 17 equals. Oh, this is going to be tedious if it keeps popping up. Let's just do this. Equals. Then 18 equals then 20 and you have to be accurate with this grade 12s otherwise it's going to be horrible 21 equals 24 equals 25 equals 26 equals 29 equals and 31 equals okay now what we need to do is we need to move over to our y values okay so we need to move over to the y values so what we're going to do is we're now going to get up to the y values. So we're going to go up. We're going to press this button. Up, 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 up. And we're going to go across. Okay, and we're going to go 21. equals 29 
9 equals 33. Oh, no, let's go up. <laughs> That's going to be 33 equals, and then 32 equals 40 equals, I'm really hoping your calculator is a little bit faster than this one is. Then we've got 45 equals 65. Wait, we've just, I've just realized something. We're not supposed to include the outliers, aren't we? So this one is wrong. So we're not going to include the outlier. So I need to just do something here. I need to go back to this. Okay, so let's just work it out. So we need to go back on you with this calculator. It won't let me. That is very frustrating. I'm not supposed to put the outliers in here, so I have made a mistake, so we're going to have to clear it. So let us switch this thing off. Shift off. Shift off. Shift off. Okay, let's start again. So I'm sorry about that, but the thing is that you can't include the outliers because then it's going to give you a really weird um, gradient. So you have to not include the outlier. So that means that I cannot put in, let me show you, we can't put in this data yet. Okay, so that means that we're now going to have nine data points and not 10 data points. So let's start again. So we're going to go mode, it's on stat already, but let's just make sure to Okay, and two, and then let's put our numbers in. So let's see if we can do it faster this time. Equals, and then 17 equals, and 18. Wow. Equals 20. Equals. 21 equals 24 equals 26 equals 29 equals and 31. Do you see that that's correct? That we should only have nine data points because we've excluded the dude who's 25 and that is why they mentioned it in the first question is because they're ex ask, expecting you to know that you have to exclude him which i forgot about so i'm sorry about that okay so now the next part of this question we have to now input the y values which are 21 equals 29 equals 33 equals 32 wow it's slow equals um where am i 40 equals uh, 45. And guys, I really hope that you're doing this with me or even slightly ahead of me. That would be great so that you can practice because I know it sounds ridiculous, but the number of times my students go, oh, we know how to do it. It's just using the calculator. And then when they get to the exams, they discover that actually they don't remember how to do it and it requires practice. And then they haven't actually done it. So then they can't remember how to do it and they don't haven't practiced enough. Okay, so now that we've pressed all those, now we press the AC button. Okay, we're clearing it. Then what we're gonna do is we're now going to find the sum. Okay, so now we're gonna go shift, 
stat. Okay, and you'll see there is a number three there that says the sum, the sum. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to find our values for the sum. Do we want the sum? Do we necessarily need the sum? Um, okay, we don't want the sum. We want reg because we want, what did we say? We want the regression. So we're going to get five for the regression. So if we press five, there you go. You can see there's A, B, R, average X and average Y. How cool is that? So now we can find the value for A, which is one. And you say equals, and you can see it's minus 19.22. So Y is equal to, remember that it was what? What did we say it was? It was B, X, A plus B, X where A was your y-intercept and B was your gradient. So we've got Y is equal to A plus BX. And we've just seen that A is minus 19.22. So A equals minus 19,22. Now let's find what B is. So again, all you have to do is go shift stat 5 and then B is 2 and say equals and you get 2.75 and you should be happy about that because that's a positive gradient so that's 2 comma 7 5 and it says calculate the equation of the least squares regression for that there you go y is equal to minus 19 comma 2 2 plus 2 comma 7 5 x. There we go, we've done it. Now it says calculate the correlation coefficient of the data, comment on the strength of relationship. So obviously we don't have to do much, we just have to get it out of our calculator. So again we go shift stat 5 for reg and there are number 3 is our correlation coefficient. And then this is 3R, and you go 0, 99. Wow, R equals 0, 99. And it says comment on the strength of the relationship between the variables. And we can say there's a very strong positive relationship. It is almost one. In other words, this is as close as you're going to get to a perfect relationship between these two. Okay, so that's really cool. Now it says hospital records, uh, let me change color. Hospital records for this reaction time give the test here, give the following information. They tell you that the lower quartile for 15 year olds is 20, whereas for 30 year olds is 61. The median is 22. Okay, and the and the 30 year olds is 65, and the upper quartile is 25, and the 30 year olds is 76. So this is for the reaction time of the this is comment on the reaction time of the different age groups on this test. Motivate you answer by referring to the values. Well, do you agree that it's very easy for us to say, well, obviously, obviously the reaction time I would say is almost a third is three times faster in the 15 year olds okay because if you look at it do you see that the Median year is 22 compared to 65. The lower quartile is 20 compared to 61. And the upper quartile is 25 compared to 67. So you could definitely say that all three values are third, three times, a third. Okay, so therefore we can say that the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile are three times um, faster in the 15 year olds. Okay, 
But what also is important is we need to look at the spread. Do you see that this has got a very small spread where that's quite a large spread? So we also need to say that there is a much smaller spread in the results, and I apologize for writing like this, of the 15 year olds. Um, because the range, the interquartile range is only five, okay, compared to the, okay, compared to the 30 year olds, whose interquartile range is equal to, what's 76 minus 61? That is 15. So that's also three times as big. Even the interquartile range is three times as big. So you can see that the 30 year olds have got a much longer reaction time than the 15 year olds. Okay, so now you've seen how to do this. We're probably gonna do a couple more examples. I know it's tedious and it takes a while, but I really need for you guys to practice and to make sure that you can do it. So I'm going to go through it again with you because I do find that the more we do this, the better you guys get at it and the better my, my students do if we practice it, okay? So an ice cream shop records the sales of ice creams in Rand and the maximum temperature in degrees Celsius for 12 days in a certain month. Okay, it looks like it's a summer month. Okay, the data that they collected is represented in the table in the scatter plot. So these are the temperatures and this is the sales of the ice cream in Rand's, okay? So you can see that here is the trend, okay? Here is the temperature in degrees Celsius, and this is the sale of the ice creams in Rand's, sure. And there was some very, very large amounts of sales of ice creams over here. So it says, describe the influence of temperature on the sales of the ice cream in the scatter plot. Well, it's pretty obvious that the hotter it is, the more ice creams are sold, right? So what is the influence of temperature? The greater the temperature, the more ice creams were sold. And grade 12s, you can't write it out like this, obviously. You need to write it out nice and neatly. I'm writing it like that because I actually, um, I actually um, want to get on with the question. <laughs> okay, it says, give a reason why this trend cannot continue indefinitely. Well, it, first of all, if it gets really, really hot, what's gonna happen? People are gonna die. And secondly, if it gets really, really hot, people aren't gonna come out. And so, and also we can't, it's not going to get hot like this forever. So the problem is that you could say the temperature is a limiting factor. If it gets too hot, the people are not gonna come out and they'll actually die. Now it says calculate the equation of least squares regression of the line of best fit. Okay, so because the way the data is scattered and there isn't one, I would say this is possibly an outlier. Um, if we look at the numbers, you can see it goes 215, 325, 522, um, 522, 412, 614. So you see there is a 412. What is that? That isn't 412. Is that 412? 29.4. I know. Sorry, then okay 445 and 408 oh these aren't in order that would be why okay so you can see that this looks like it could possibly be an outlier when it was about 32 point something degrees and the sale was about 450 445 but the data is quite a bit spread across here as well. So I'm going to include it. It's not so big an outlier that you don't have to include it. So let us now get out our calculator and we're now going to start again. So we again have to go mode and we're again going to go to and we're again going to go to, and now we have to put the information in. So now remember that the temperature is your X value, okay? This is your X value, and this is your Y value. Right, so let's do that. 
So it is going to be 24. And it doesn't have to be numerical order, by the way, as long as it's the matching Y value. Okay, so it's 24.2. Equals twenty six point four equals twenty one point nine equals then we've got 25.2 20 and like i said already grade 12s please if you can do this on your calculators either with me or better still ahead of me that would be wonderful because you really need to practice this i do find that my students tend to go a bit blank in the exams and not remember how to do this if they haven't practiced. So please, please understand that you should practice. So it's gonna be 32.1, okay? And also remember, you're not allowed to bring your manual into the exam with your 29.4. Um, so, you know, if you think that, oh, it's okay, there's a manual or whatever, um, you can't bring the manual into the exam with you, the instructions on how to do this. They're assuming, I'll tell you why, because your students out there that don't have fancy calculators that will do this, so they're going to be doing it manually. They actually are going to be doing it manually. So they're not going to let you, if you're lucky enough to have a calculator that does all this fancy stuff for you, um, bring in the method on how to do it on a piece of paper. You need to know how to use your calculator to work this out. So, okay, then it's 28 1. 32.6. Uh, 27.2. equals right and now we go up and we do it all again for the y values up 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 okay we go across oh dear up 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 Right, so we go 215 equals 325. I think I'm getting to the selling of ice creams. You know, it's for fun. 185 equals. Three thirty two equals four hundred and six equals five hundred and twenty two equals four hundred and 12 whoopsie equals 600 and 14 equals 540 four equals 400, oh, this takes a long time, I'm so sorry, 421, but there's no way we can get around it. I have to teach you this, and we have to do it, and we have to use a calculator. So if I did this manually, it would take even longer. So, yeah. Let's 
There we go, at last. Okay, now what are we going to do? We now have to press the AC button. Okay, then we go Shift, Stat, and we go Reg, 5. And now we're going to choose 1 for A. And we go Equals, and we see it's minus 460.35. So A is minus 460, comma 35. That is where it would cut the y-axis. And B is going to be, let's do it again, shift, stat, reg, equals 30, comma 08. 30 comma 09. 30 comma 09. So therefore the equation for the least squares is y is equal to minus 460 comma 35 plus 30 comma 09 x. And yes guys you're welcome to write it the other way around but since the, the equation is officially y is equal to a plus bx it's better to do this. Now it says calculate the correlation coefficient so we don't have to because we've done all that so we go shift that five three equals and this is 0 0.96 so r equals 0, 0,96 so therefore we've done that now it says comment on the strength of the relationship between the variables so the rent the relationship would be the relationship is going to be a strong positive one is strong and positive what do we mean we mean that it is very close to one which means it very much matches that equation I mean, and more importantly it is positive because it is a positive straight line okay so do you see that these things are actually not that bad to do you just have to practice okay i'm not going to do you know what i'm going to do we're going to do we're going to do these questions we're going to do calculate the mean of the data we're going to do the standard deviation we're going to do this one i'm not going to do this one today i'll come back to it i just think that and we're going to do this one. I'll read this one now. Okay, I just think that we're wasting a lot of time putting in the information to get the equation of least squares regression line when we've actually done two examples already. And you guys can go back and watch a recording of it just to make sure. So let's go through this, okay? It says, at a certain school, only 12 candidates take maths and accounting. The marks as a percentage scored by these candidates in the preparatory exams for mathematics and counting are shown in the table and scatter plot below. So this is the maths and this is the counting. So they put percentages achieved in maths and percentage achieved in accounting. Now, first of all, it says calculate the mean percentage of the data. Okay, so I would normally just say, okay, you could add them up and divide by 12. But now it says also calculate the standard deviation of the mathematics data. So because of that, I'm saying we should actually use our stat, okay, our statistics button. So we're going to go mode and we're going to go two. But now please note we're only looking at the mathematics data. So we're not looking at the A plus BX. We're looking at the one variable. So we just press one. Okay, and now you'll see we've just got X because all we're going to input are the mathematics values. So therefore that's 52, enter, 82, enter, 93, enter, 95, equals 71, equals 65 equals 77 equals 42 equals 89 equals 48 equals 45 equals and 57. Okay, there we go. Now we can press AC 
And now we're going to press the stat button. We go shift stat. Okay, and this time we're looking for the var, okay, the variable. So we're going to go var for, and you'll see here, what did they ask us for? They asked us for the mean, the mean percentage. So we're looking at two, so two is equal to 68. So we can say, well, the average is 68. So that's pretty easy, hey? Now it says we need to work out the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is delta, little delta x. Okay, so we're going to again go shift, stat, and we're going to go again for four to get our bar. And this time we want this one, yeah, number three, the delta x. We press it and you get 18.42. So the variable is 18,42. So therefore we're saying that the mean percentage is 68 plus or minus 18.42. The standard deviation is 18.42. Now it says determine the number of candidates whose percentages in mathematics lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So what does that mean? That means that we need to take 68 and we have to add 18.42 so that's going to be 4 2 8 and 8 is 16 carry 1 6 and 1 is 7 that's 86 that's the upper limit okay and then we're going to go 68 minus 18 comma 42 so remember that's 0 0 so that becomes a 7 that's a 9 that's a 10 10 minus 2 is 8 9 minus 4 is 5 comma 17 minus 8 is 9, and 5 minus 1 is 49. So this is the lower limit, okay? So in other words, we number we need numbers all the way from 50 through to 86. That is the number of people that lie within one standard deviation. So we've got 52, 82, 71, 65, 77, uh, 57. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six people, six people fit within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay. We're not, like I said, going to calculate the equation for least squares regression line. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this. It says, if a candidate from this group called 60 cent maths exam, what, but was absent for the accounting exam, predict, oh, uh, okay, we would need to do the equation, the least squares regression line to do this. So we will do these questions tomorrow, okay? What I would like to do before we finish, because we're almost finished for the day, is it says use the scatter plot and identify any outliers in the data. Do you agree that this is obviously an outlier? I mean, our line basically looks like it's going to do something like that. Okay, I'm not sure, but something like that. Okay, so and that there is my outlier. Okay, so now what I'd like to suggest you guys do for me is, and or you can do it for yourself as well, is take a screenshot or um, just, yeah, pause on this point and try and do the find the equation for the least squares regression. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise all the ink on this so it's easier for you to see. And remember that this would be your X values and this would be your Y values. Okay, and you can do that for me um, for tomorrow. And remember that tomorrow's lesson is at 3 p.m. And we're going to be carrying on doing some questions, but we're also going to move on to doing normal other questions other than the least, least squares regression. We're going to go back to cumulative frequency, integral our ranges, box and width of plots before we start on probability. Have a great day, grade 12s.